Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Or good morning. Okay, let's give uh, two more minutes for folks to gather and uh, we'll get started. I see Subash on the line. I heard from uh, Atul that you were at the Nephew Summit yesterday in uh, Bangalore. Yeah, Alexis, yeah. Uh, how, how was it? Yeah, I think a, a quite good amount of folks were there. And uh, yeah, we had a good number of sessions also covering multiple aspects. So it was really interesting. Good, good. Yeah, at least the feedback I got from Atul uh, was that your session? He, he really enjoyed your session. Okay, so exactly. he's looking forward to more internal discussion to see how we can help. Maybe. All right, let's wait one more minute and we'll get started. Uh, at three plus plus the hour. Okay, let's get started. Hey everyone, so this is Friday, April 5th, um, RxScope and architecture meeting for NEFIO. For the agenda today, we don't have a very packed agenda. It's uh, an architecture review. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the agenda for today. Anyone has other things they'd like to add in the agenda? All right, and um, as I was saying on Slack, I can only host this until uh, the 45 minute mark of the hour. So I'll have to drop by then. The meeting can continue if, if needed. So let's just try, let's, let's jump straight into the architecture topic. A um, Couple of weeks ago, I think we started sharing some uh, architecture diagram that looked like this initially. Of course, there is a few hiccups that we'll fix, but this is how it all started, which is a view. And we, the feedback I gave myself to this view that I created was it's maybe too crowded. And then uh, we got some great um, advice from uh, Karen, namely that probably the C4 model to create some architecture view might be suitable for Nephew. So the C4 model, um, for those that are not aware, I'll just uh, share the, the high level. It has a, a top-down kind of a view where you start with what they call the context diagram, where in this example, the green box here is the context as, and you just look at the system itself and all the surrounding elements. And so that would be the first level diagram to see more the interaction surrounding Nephew or the system as a, as a hermetic box. 
Then the second view is the container diagram. So now you start opening up that box, which is Nephew in our case, and look at the various containers within that box. So here container doesn't mean a, a, an OCI container. It means more of a, a system or a subsystem, should I say. And then the third view is you explode yet again. So you take one of the containers identified in the view number two, and you explode it in all the various components. So these would be actual code kind of functionality in the system, right? So, so, so that view will allow our consumers and users of Nephew to understand where Nephew sits in the big picture and then drill down into the components and, and the very detailed view of the various um, containers we have in Nephew. So with that, so that's the introduction I wanted to give, but given Karen uh, led most of this work to start with, Karen, maybe you wanna, I see you're on the, on the call. If, do you wanna share and, and walk us through what uh, we came up with? Or do you want me to do it? Uh, I can, yeah, if you want. Um, yeah, please I'm do so. I'm just trying to get it up and running here now. Uh, and well, then I, I guess it all right, do you have it running? Well, I just have your uh, GitHub, right? Yeah, yeah, you can walk through that. Or I have it in the um, the, the document. Yeah, you walk through this. Sure, okay. And I'll maybe show well, it later sure. at the end in the in the in the actual documentation page. Okay. So do you want to walk us through this? Okay. Just give me a sec. Thank you. Um. Yeah, let's try it from here. Where's my share button? Okay, and so, so the intention is obviously that this new uh, set of views from the C4 model would replace that initial architecture view that uh, we tried to create in the first place. We don't have to scratch it. It's just, uh, uh, um, I would see a replacement because that one would convey a better story for our users. So uh, go ahead, uh, Karen. Yeah, so I, I think it wasn't necessarily me who originally suggested C4 modeling, but I've worked with it in the past, so I kind of volunteered to help out with creating an initial set of views, um, which I did initially in a kind of a, a playground repository. I created in my own um, uh, GitHub. Uh, I've subsequently forked the documentation repo and dropped in a Nephew architecture page there as a potential place where we could sort of hang this sort of stuff to, to, to work it in. Um, we're using PlantUML as uh, Alexis said, I think, um, but that's really irrelevant, I guess, from this perspective. Um, the first view is a, a kind of a top level system context view, which kind of shows Nephew as a closed system. Um, it's got a brief description of what Nephew is. That's taken as a synopsis of what you would find on the main architecture page. And then it shows the main actors that interact with the Nephew system and the main sort of entities that Nephew itself will interact with and manipulate. So from the top down, we have administrators uh, who interact with Nephew to create network topologies, Kubernetes clusters, and network function intents. We have higher level service orchestration systems, core and, uh, and ORAN service orchestrators are referred to here. There could be others. Um, and they would do similar to the administrator in an automated fashion. They would generate network topologies, Kubernetes clusters, and network functions. And then similarly, we may have GitOps uh, systems uh, producing artifacts that get onboarded into Nephi or CI CD systems that will um, deploy or bring in or introduce externally delivered packages and, and so on and so forth. Um, Nephew itself then can interact with network functions that it supports. And here we'd, we'd originally played around with having um, OAI and um, free 5G core called out explicitly. We then sort of decided, I think after we had a brief discussion that it might be better to just represent that as supported network functions generally. And then in the text describe that we support these two with other vendors implementing their support independently. So this could be something that, you know, Ericsson or Nokia or anybody else could, um, uh, independently deliver support in Nephew to, to manage their network functions. These network functions themselves execute on cloud infrastructure coming from cloud providers. 
um, and the cloud providers of the cloud infrastructure itself can also be managed by Nephew through the various APIs that are exposed there. So that's kind of the, uh, the closed system view of Nephew. Yeah, go ahead. There, there is a question from Wim. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's more a rem when we designed originally, we always had two personas that we were targeting from the beginning. One was the, we call them the network engineers, right? So because, so there is people who are basically creating the packages. So I call it the catalog, right? And then there's people who are using those and implementing it. Would it be possible to indicate those two roles? Yep. Yeah. So can you clarify what the two roles are, please? So you said network engineer. So one is we, we basically define two kind of role. One is the, I, what I think you call the administrator. I call, we call the network engineer as far as I can tell, right? Which okay. was the people that are actually implementing and, and, uh, and going to instantiate the service, right? Okay. And then we had the designers. I need to look at the exact wording of the document. I need to look at the document, but which were the people creating the packages. So it's like the catalogs itself, not, yeah, so the packages for the network function. So you would have like a UPF uh, for a mass market and, and so on and so forth. So we had okay. people that would would do that. And then, uh, so they would create, uh, so they would own the catalog and then you had people that uh, would own the, yeah, the, the specifics of uh, the instantiation. Okay. Well, That's what, what I we suggest... did from the beginning. So what I suggest here probably is we'll have a, a, a dotted array kind of a box like service orchestration that I will call probably persona. And we'll add in there network engineering designers. Yeah, because the problem which we have, I mean, so I just I made a remark that we only call out one administrator. Now the issue that of course we have is that every implementation is having different uh, roles and responsibilities and stuff like that which is then the opposite way of not doing something like this, right? So, but, I mean, well, that's what... it, it would be good to highlight at least that there is multiple personas that we are targeting with Nephew, right? So from the beginning, we had that in mind. And I think it's important to call that out in the, in the graph. The problem is, of course, every implementation will probably have different uh, views on this. But I think what I'm trying to highlight is that we should, from the highest level, indicate that there is multiple personas that we are targeting from the beginning. I think that's reasonable. Yeah, no objection to that. I see we have Tal and then Tim. Yeah, I'm I'm agreeing uh, with uh, with Wim. Essentially, I would say maybe architect is the main role, but I I think this is going to start getting confusing if we put humans here. I think this is the system context. Humans are involved here in multiple levels, you know, in terms of design and we can call it administration, but it, that's like a management. I don't, this is an automation system, right? It, automated orchestration. We, we assume humans are involved where they have to be involved. I, I think maybe it's best to show the human roles in, in a separate diagram and not here for the context because you know, humans are involved with uh, ORAN and Orchestrator and GitOps and uh, bundling network functions. We, we don't have to specify, I think, the people doing the job here. For, for this diagram, in my opinion, it, it actually uh, clutters and confuses to, to put humans in the mix. We assume that all components have user interfaces, <laughs> right? That's my main point. So, so it, it could be that maybe a separate diagram about roles might be helpful or something else. But I think in the context of Nephew, in my view anyway, the, um, the so it, it, it is intended to be a system that can be collaboratively interacted with by both people and machines. That's one of the key facets that is documented on the main documentation page, at least. And I think not including them here would be perhaps indicating that they are, that the system is fully autonomous and, and standalone, which I don't think it's, well, if, I, I, if we do that, we would have to list all those different roles here and how they interact, right? They're operators, architects of different kinds, um, right? Well, Solution um, architects, and yeah, you know, etc. Yeah, so so maybe we can try. I, and I understand the feedback, but we can take. I agree with Kieran. I think it's key to represent person here, but instead of administrator, 
we could read personas and in the text saying there are various types of personas such as network engineer, designers, architect. We don't need to enumerate them all. We will just acknowledge that there is a slew of persona that will interact with Nephew to some shape and form. This diagram is not meant to be the detailed view of everything, right? It's just more the what what are the interactions happening with Nephew? And that's that's pretty much what it answers. Right. Would but that I would be say good? I, I, I think that it's actually very beneficial for people at this high level to know what kind of roles we're addressing, as Wim pointed out, right? That there are people bundling network functions, right? We we have an SDK or we intend to have an SDK to help with that. So I think for the different components of Nephew, um, there are different roles that we're addressing. And I think those are very important, but I think it, it would just clutter this specific diagram. So I'm not so, saying put it in, but maybe put it as a separate diagram of just where do people interact with this? So maybe so, move from so, C4 to C5. <laughs> maybe no, but I have a suggestion then. Um, and Karen, please correct me if this is not a good one, but we call this one the system context view. So we could have that administrator box eight personas, but then we could have like more of a persona context view where actually all the, that, that, that makes it about the persona. So it would be an additional uh, top level kind of diagram to your point, Tal, that only speaks about the various personas and their interaction at the nephew as, as a black, as a closed loop, as a closed system. Yeah, thank you. That's exactly what I tried to express. What the other think, option, well, we could try a couple of different variants. I mean, I think we can um, we can iterate on a, on a few different approaches and experiment with it a little bit to see. Um, I would still be leaning towards the having less diagrams and trying to. Um, I'm just I'm just throwing together very briefly a view that's similar to what you were discussing there a minute ago, um, which would be to put a box around the around the um, the personas and in the meantime we have Ravi Ravi like that. Anyway. yeah a couple of comments probably I'm more used to see kind of I mean uh, I, I, I like to see this kind of some kind of a layered kind of a diagram no and, and more coming from the fact of basically identifying the apis open apis the north, south, the east, west, and so on. Uh, it'll be good to identify those interfaces. Um, the other thing is that because you no, know, we have now we have also one architecture diagram that we discussed in the working group too with the NFU and integration, and so on. So I think what so when we derive those diagrams, it should be this should be kind of the master kind of an architecture from which you could extend those architectures. So I think I think we sh we should also think from that perspective. Um, is to keep those basically uh, demarcate those APIs uh, and think about how other groups who are specializing that might use it. Yeah, at that level, the intent is not to demonstrate or talk about necessarily APIs. It's really more about as uh, as an individual you looking at nephew what it is that I can expect in terms of interaction, not how are gonna be these interaction. This is the lower level view and we're gonna get there. But this is not, so I would say the various interface type that you referred to, that's probably gonna come up in, uh, I would say probably a component view coming up um, the third layer, or it could be Actually, no, sorry, it should be the system landscape view. So the second layer. Yeah, so we'll a lower there. layer, I think, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is where we should potentially have the Norsebond API right now. It's depicted as web UI and Kubernetes API server being the quote unquote Norsebond API. And the Southbound APIs are a little bit hidden in the Nephew core and Nephew network function controller kind of a, containers. So, so that view start answering a little bit this, and then the lower view of Nephew Core will provide the details of the southbound interactions. Uh, so, so it's not a one-stop gap kind of view. It's really drilling all the time a bit deeper into 
into uh, into the into into the architecture. Mm, okay. No, I was just also thinking from the three swim lane kind of the view that we have, and then trying to relate this. But I see where you're coming from. Um, yeah, I mean, we want this really get this diagram is really complicated. I see. I see. I can't even see what it is in, what is in that. But yeah, let's continue the discussion. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Ravi. I, I took note of your feedback to see how we can integrate it. Yeah. Thanks. So the uh, I don't have a question. I just have a comment. Since Alex, as Alexis indicated and Kiran indicated, there are different levels of this view. Probably, I think it. I, I'm thinking it probably makes sense for Kiran to present the entire view, and then uh, then we can ask the questions because some of the things that we have in mind may have been they, have, they may have already addressed in the uh, subsequent views. So probably, uh, does it make sense for Kiran to present the entire thing and then we open up with Q and A? Yeah, we can quickly skim through the rest of it. If yeah. That makes sense. yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah. There's <clears throat> quite a lot of chat in the background as well. Um, okay, so that was don't the... worry, Karen. I'm, I'm capturing the feedback. Cool. Uh, that's the system context view. We just discussed uh, some good comments on that. Um, landscape view is effectively, is the, this is the closed system view and this is the open system view. So it kind of says, Okay, we still have the same boundary. We've got Nephew. Uh, within that Nephew boundary, we then have a number of uh, individual components. I don't think this is a purest C4 approach, um, but I think it's, well, pragmatically, I think we can adapt the framework to fit best what we need. We've called out the Kubernetes API server as a first-class citizen because it's an important aspect of how Nephew works. Uh, we've called out then, I guess, a number of... Um, in inverted commas core components. So we call out ports, we call out config sync, we call out Nephew core, which is kind of um, the various Kubernetes operators that make up the, the, the core functionalities of Nephew, not to overload the word core. Um, and then network function controllers. These are controllers that are dedicated towards specific network functions. So I'll just drill in individually into each box. Um, the, with the web UI, obviously, which is the backstage based web application for writing um, a web browser interface to package management. Kubernetes API server is a component of the Kubernetes control plane that exposes the Kubernetes API. It's the front end for the Kubernetes control plane. Uh, porch, and so basically most of the actors, all of the actors interact either directly with the Kubernetes API server or uh, via the web UI with the Kubernetes API server. Porch then is a um, Package orchestration server. It's a Kubernetes extension API server which manages the lifecycle of KRM configuration packages. So it interacts with the API server and with Git. Config sync uh, is our GitOps service, which lets administrators uh, deploy configurations from a source of truth. And they can support one or many clusters in a hybrid or multi cloud environment. And they apply Kubernetes resources to the API server and they reconcile them from the Git repository. Uh, Nephew Core is responsible for handling different aspects of workload and cluster specialization and actuation. So there's a number of different functions in that. And um, we just basically highlight that it interacts with infrastructure, probably should be a line going towards network functions as well, perhaps. But we said that a lot of the network functions at the minute, at least, maybe this isn't the intention, but at the minute, at least there are specialized controllers for uh, open air interface and for free 5G core. Um, and they manage the network functions in terms of deploying them and so on and so forth. Uh, and then the network functions themselves run the cloud infrastructure. Um, and that's the uh, that's the general gist of that. And again, this is kind of, I guess, a best effort understanding of how best to decompose the, the, the Nephew closed system view into an open system view. Um, then what we said was for each one of these blue boxes, uh, maybe not 100% all of them, but certainly for the controllers, the core, the config sync for porch, it made sense to drill into those in, in more detail with what's called a component view. Um, so here we took the Nephew core. Um, it has the interactions with the Kubernetes API server highlighted as a single line coming into the core APIs um, container. What we did here was we called out the CRDs as individual entities, and then we called out the uh, reconcilers that work towards those CRDs as, as, as separate entities. Um, and again, I guess feedback on that approach would probably be useful. Um, and then is this the right composition? We're fairly sure we captured most of them. 
Um, yeah, I don't want to go through all of them in any great detail. Um, porch then was the next one. So taking a similar approach for porch and sort of opening up that box and 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 you can see package variant set CRDs and package variant CRDs and then the controllers that interact with those and the Git repository. And no. then config sync oh, sorry. and deployment view and other representative use cases would be the next phase of this, but I guess we'll, yeah, go ahead. I know it's the Tal, I think you have oh, your hand yeah, raised. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, a, a raised hand doesn't mean it's urgent necessarily, but uh, <clears throat> please finish. I just want to make some comments. Uh, I think I had finished. It was oh, just, okay. um, Good. So I, I, uh, there's so much here. Oh my God. But, uh, can you scroll up a little bit to the, um, yeah, I, I just want to point out, you know, some of the, um, this is more of a document of the, as I see it, of our reference implementation. Um, but our intent is to make things more modular, right? So the fact that we use config sync right now, that's not a necessary part of, uh, of, uh, um, Nephew, right? This is, you know, it comes from Google. Google Cloud uses config sync and we've used it in our reference implementations, but we we absolutely assume that there might be other delivery systems. Right. Mm -hmm. we, we we even have a few um a few uh um uh, use cases that that already do something with that, right? So when you download Nephew, yeah, it uses config sync right now for our test, but we that's not a necessary component. So I don't know. If there's a way to show it in a different color, although I think the colors here are very uh, specific to this uh, philosophy, so not sure how to do it. Maybe a dotted line. Um, it is there possible is. to change the colors of the boxes. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we do. We did discuss this in terms of potentially naming that box uh, reconciliation engine, um, as opposed to config sync, and then sort of saying that the the currently supported one is config sync, and others are possible to use as well. I well, try forget even, that update. Even more than that, you know, th that already assumes that um, this is 100% GitOps. <laughs> and I know we have some may maybe differing opinions here, but I, I don't think we should assume GitOps always. If we are assuming GitOps always, then yes, we need something that reconciles Git. But if we assume other delivery mechanisms that might not go through Git repositories, right, then um, it won't be about reconcile, reconciling Git. It would be something else, right? Um, at, at the end of the day, I, I consider it a delivery mechanism. How do we get our deployment KRM to a workload cluster, mm. right? And config sync is a pull-based, but you know, I think most of the world actually uses push-based uh, ways of interacting with workload clusters. So. Um, yeah, I, I don't find, I never understood that as a core part of Nephew's philosophy. I understood it as a reference implementation, but I don't see it as necessary for uh, for Nephew to do what it does, right? If there's a box here that I would call delivery, you know, or I call it scheduling sometimes, you know, how do you get that KRM to the workload cluster? That's that's what config sync solves specifically. I mean, in, in my view, Config sync is there now in the architecture, and I think it would be strange not to represent it. Um, and then whether or not we make it more general, and I, I guess but the, we probably need to decide whether we want to have a here and now as an architect, a description of the the realized architecture in the system that we're delivering at this point in time. Sorry, there's cleaners starting up here behind me, so hopefully the noise isn't too loud. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. yeah. So, so to be honest, the, the where that comes out, I think, is opinions from, from cloud platform providers, right? Because in the room right now, we have uh, Google and Red Hat, right? But there are other providers that haven't been as involved in Nephew, <laughs> right? Amazon, uh, Wind River, uh, VMware, right? And each platform comes with its own delivery mechanisms for these things. And the question remains, you know, if, if you adopt Nephew, does it mean you have to adopt Config Sync as well, or do you interact with existing systems? And you know, from Google's perspective, sure, use config sync. That's great. <laughs> That's what Google Cloud uses uh, mostly, right? But I, I, I just want to be polite here and uh, you know respect the other uh, uh, cloud platform providers and mechanisms that they might already have in place that are well supported. So um, yeah, I, I, I'm just trying to differentiate between our reference implementation and our our actual uh, structure. And I think I, at this point, it's fine to, 
representation. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think for now it is what it is, right? We have a GitOps engine, and that's what we have in R2, which is what we're trying to depict today. Then this can absolutely evolve. And, and if we start building these diagrams for R2, and then we have another set of these diagrams for R3, maybe the Nephew core component view will, will evolve in R3, right? Towards maybe having this, not a GitOps engine anymore, but more of a scheduler kind of function that could be GitOps, that could be some other kind of mechanisms. So my, my, um, my concern here, the, the reason I raise this point is, you know, if people look at this and it says, you know, Nephew at the top and it doesn't say the word reference implementation, that they'll assume, okay, Nephew requires configsing. Maybe that's irrelevant to me because I can't use configsing. I already have something else. So, so I think what yeah. what we wanted to do there, I think I, I mentioned it a bit, we just didn't make the update in time. Um, similar to what we have down here for cloud providers, what we would have here would be reconciliation engine. And then inside the text, we would highlight the config sync is currently supported in reference implementation and other integrations are possible. Something along those lines. Yeah. And yeah, then to, to my mind, strong. reconciliation engine can be GitOps based, it can be push based, it can be but uh, that's another, an entirely different kind of worms that we can open up on, on another day. But making these boxes maybe slightly more generic and uh, we did discuss as well, um, whether the config sync drilled down to the C, the, the, the next level of C4 was an appropriate thing to have in the Nephew architecture, given that it's a system that we integrate from elsewhere. It's not something that's a core part of Nephew and similarly maybe the Git repository manager would be something else that is also a reference implementation we have um uh, what right. call it in here yeah because that, that goes back to the kind of context view because mm -hmm. we we assume east west integrations as well right with existing catalogs with existing site inventories and yep. um yeah we we didn't quite place that here yeah so i I would like to iterate yeah. on this more. <laughs> and I think it's probably worth having, I, in my view, anyway, what I do internally with my teams is I try and say, show me what you have and show me what you'd like to have and have those two views beside each other. So, you know, this is what we have and this is where we're going so that people can, because we always have this back and forth to say, well, you're showing what we have right now, but that's not exactly how we want it. Let's show what we want rather than what we have and so on and so forth. So it might be worth saying that we need a Nephew current architecture and a Nephew planned architecture view and they put those two beside each other. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, the, the thing is that I think we already have that architecture in some ways, right? Because it's already somewhat decoupled. Uh, both Porch and Config Sync together are our GitOps engine but they don't actually speak to each other directly. They're, they are decoupled, right? You could potentially already just replace config sync with something else. So I think from the very start, our, ex yeah. our existing architecture right now has that kind of decoupling built in. We, we provide config sync as an implementation, but there's, uh, there's nothing necessary right now in FEO architecturally that, that requires it, right? We, we, our yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah. I didn't mean to make the planned point about okay. config sync. I just meant to make it about you know, generally it might be worthwhile to have both views so that you know we we can kind of create a desired state view as well as a current state view. Yeah, I think we're on the same page, and the feedback is well taken, Tal. So I I took all these notes, and and we'll make some edits with Karen on how to suggest something to take that forward. Thank you. Um, uh, Varada, I see you are, have your hand raised. Right. Uh, I want to say, uh, Kiran, Alexis, uh, and to the team, uh, we have been discussing about the uh, representing nephew and the architecture diagram. Uh, but so far, see, either the diagram looks too much of information or it's too high level. But this C4 model looks to me very appropriate, at least my view. Okay, I can understand where the nephew is first in the closed system view, then we are opening it up. Then we are, you know, getting into the component. I'm not sure what is the fourth level, but uh, I view, you know, uh, this, uh, you know, immediately uh, and getting what is there inside, which uh, I'm not able to, uh, you know, consider. So I would say the C4 model is good, in my opinion. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you yeah. for that. Maybe, maybe we can debate, okay, configsing is there or double arrows, we can review always what is the correct component, 
how to generalize and all. But I think representing in C4 looks the best, you know, um, at least from my perspective, I'm not a coder, you know, from the outside perspective, I'm able to see what is inside and what these people are talking about. So well done in my opinion. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, well, that is agree, yeah. double clicking, double clicking on boxes. That's I agree. It's, it's a good, good view. Thank you. Okay, thanks for the feedback, um, Ravi. Yeah, just can you just scroll that the previous picture? Uh, I think Karen, uh, you know, the one above. Uh, I think one. Yeah, here. So in the infrastructure layer, I think we still have a layer of nephew management because I see you put the network function controllers there. To at least in current implementation, we have those creators, operators in the infrastructure, and I think with service assurance and observability and so on. So I think we should include some nephew management aspects in that layer too, right? So this isn't a deployment view. This is a, I guess, a functional view. Um, what is in the bounds of responsibility for nephew versus what's in the bounds of responsibility for things that it interacts with. We, I think we have an intention to include a deployment view as well, which will include sort of an indication of what runs, for example, on a management cluster versus what runs out on the infrastructure, if that's what you're referring to, is it? Yeah, no, even from an architecture perspective, because I feel that whenever, whenever I see things like NF deployment and, and NF config kind of APIs, they are kind of binding your management to the infrastructure. There's an open API in the southbound too unless we completely take that off and say that okay it's everything happening in the in the in the management layer in the in the centralized management layer if if something is that something that we formalize or is it an option i'm not sure i think somewhere we should reflect that in mm -hmm. the top level view as well i guess right but again logically if, even if it's part of nephew core it could live on a on a on a you know i don't know on a, on a it doesn't have to be part of a centralized management cluster it's logically part of Nephew, even if it lives out on the edge. So that's kind of just, this is kind of showing logically what, what is the, within the scope of responsibility of Nephew. How do we decompose that down into different components? And then parts of Nephew core, for example, can live and parts of the network function controllers can live out on different clusters in a deployment scenario, but, and then config sync as well. Like these are all distributed functions in terms of deployment. Okay, but, so I'm not sure that, that view is clear from this picture, but probably we can probably, yeah, we no. need some words behind this, I guess. So. Well, yeah, and I think that's it's why we, we also need to introduce the concept of a deployment view. And I think the C4 okay. model does, right. it talks a little bit about these aspects as well. So it's, it's not intended to be um, like a deployment diagram would be something similar that you can and illustrate how instances of software systems and containers are deployed onto the infrastructure. So that, that would be the sort of view we would build up to show what parts of Nephew are running on management clusters, on edge clusters, on regional clusters as kind of an example view, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Sure, I mean, yeah, sure. If you're further evolving that into deployment uh, models, I think, yeah, that should be okay, I guess, yeah. Sure, yeah, cool. thanks. Yeah, good, because that will also address some of the comment from Wim on the chat. Uh, but we might see you have your hand raised as well, so please uh, speak up. Uh, so could we maybe indicate in a color uh, where this, because typically network functions are work, config sync, we use both, right? But uh, mm. we indicate it with the color. I, I have two uh, things. One is I was just, uh, it's a detail actually. So it's a question whether we could indicate it through a color uh, where they reside or something like that. Then you don't need to put uh, multiple diagrams because I believe the, the flow is very nice, right? Mm. Now, I, I my other comment was around when we go into the CRD, like the last thing, right? So that's why I raised my hand, actually. I have the feeling that this is not the right technology to do it because you I think sequence diagrams are a way better way to start representing I think at some point we have to stop yeah so I think I'd like to start because introducing here, sequence diagrams here like that yeah, like, yeah, yeah because I think budget. from the moment you, you go into this domain with packet variant set it becomes very tricky right so so I have the feeling that at some point we have to stop and then use, uh, I, I would say for this sequence diagrams, because they make it way more clear, I think, for this type of uh, explanation. Yeah, right? I think because, we're open to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, but I think I, it's I, great. I, I mean, yeah, 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 sorry, go ahead. 
Yeah, no, just to your point, Karen, if you go on the on the one at the top, like the Nifio core, because I want to explain, uh, yeah, the Nifio core, uh, right Sorry, below, because I want to explain, yeah, it took me a little bit of time to figure these things out. Uh, <laughs> I learned a lot of Nifio just doing that diagram, by the way. <laughs> um, but all the various CRDs and the way they're structured, right? Resource CRDs, inventory, infra, config, workload CRDs, right? And how they interact with our controllers. That's what I tried to depict in there. Um, it might be already way too low level, and I'm fine with scrap this. But this is okay, I think. This is fine. For someone uh, trying to trying... learn, yeah. uh, for someone trying fine. to learn, that is still, I think, a great way to understand the various dynamics between CRDs and reconcilers. Yeah, mm. what I'm trying to say, as I was not more on this picture, but when we go to package variants and package variant sets and stuff like that, it becomes uh, more tricky, I think. I think the view there is okay, I think. Here it becomes tricky, right? Because a package variant basically triggers ah, okay, a you're... whole bunch of stuff. You see, so, so they okay, don't you're calling out the own. CRD itself. Yeah, so I'm I'm not the, the previous one. So I think that's very good, right? So I think that's I, I agree with you 100 that it's good for explanation. But once you go here, this this one in particular, I have the feeling that it's better to present this in a sequence diagram because. A package variant triggers a whole bunch of stuff, right? Yeah, and... I think that's uh, that's something we'll need to iterate on. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean this. I think I threw this one together fairly quick and dirtily, so I didn't I didn't put as much effort in as you put into this one anyway. Yeah, I no, think this it, one is very good, uh, but I think when you go to that level, package variant, you trigger a whole bunch of stuff. Like you basically trigger a package instantiation, you give it context, you do a mm -hmm. bunch of specialization. So you you will never be able to present that I think in this view, nor will you be, I, because it will be very overloaded. Yeah, that's agreed. my two cents. Yeah, my two cents. So, but okay, great job okay. by the way. Um, Isti. Uh, so while I agree that we need sequence diagrams to understand how these controllers work, I would say that similarly, how is it has value to uh, list all the controllers inside Nefio Core. I would see value in just simply listing the controllers inside Porch. But uh, two, so the the uh, important part is missing from Porch is the package revision and the package revision resources, uh, the controllers for these resources that are not traditional controllers, but they are implemented in an API server. But I think I don't think that is important at this view. I would add them. So if we are talking about package variant and package variant set controllers, then we should add package revision and package revision resources as well. <clears throat> Maybe repository, uh, yes. That yeah, it no, has a I, controller as well. No, but there is a good view Wim has as well. I mean, we I have ideas on how to update this view, but I think our intention with Karen was to not too much effort to start with because if it was throw away, we don't want it to put too much effort. But the feedback I'm getting in, uh, we're getting is this is pretty well received. There is a couple of tweaks we need to do left and right for what we already have today. Yeah. The porch seems yes. to be more of a ring to probably redo a little bit the porch one based on the feedback we have. But but now that people have seen this and now that we've been able to talk about it, and thank you, Karen. I think we will make that contribution to the uh, Nephew doc repo, right? And hopefully it's uh, it's something where more domain expert can chip in because <laughs> Karen and I are not necessarily the expert on all the various components of Nephew. And so having that help will also be beneficial. Uh, I think we can still do the next round of updates and and share that again with the group. But then after I hope that we can get more people to chip in on the specificities where we dive into some components or as you suggested, as well as WIM, some even uh, flow diagrams. So what I'm saying is ultimately we'll have to need more uh, community involvement, but right now, I think until the next iteration, we're, I'm confident that between Karen and I, we can take it uh, to the next uh, step. To the next, uh, you know, iteration at least. Can you share this already, so that we can give you already some feedback? Uh, because there's a lot of detail probably that we want to. So, uh, 
Go ahead, Karen. I was going to say, uh, there's a, 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 a fork of the documentation repo on, on my GitHub, or we can create a pull request, whichever works. No, 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 it's okay. I mean, if it's if we can access it, it's fine, uh, Kieran. I want to give you some feedback on what you have already, and then, because it's probably if we can, right? And we can, uh, but it's on your so, account, is Kieran? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Just, uh, I put it on the chat account. here. Oh yeah. Cool. Okay. Even better. Perfect. Yeah. It's on a branch so called. Every... Um, it's on a branch called Architecture on the. Uh, yeah. Somewhere. Anyway, I'll find it. How are you? Yeah. No, that's. I, um, I, I shared the, 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 where we did the plant to ML our code, um, Karen. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll share another link. I've just copied it into the arc, a fork of the architecture documents repo because I think that hopefully is where people would like to see it live. Um, uh, that's... Guys, sharing it on All right. the SIG network architecture channel as well. Thank you. Yeah, we, we will. Um, sorry, everyone. I'm, I said I would have to drop. Um, so I need to go. Um, everyone, thank you for the feedback. We don't need to wrap up the meeting. Karen, maybe if you want to keep I getting actually, people through a few things. Yeah, I need to drop as well. If that's okay. you got to go. Got to do some giving people lifts. But um, thanks very much. Yeah, no, for the no feedback. Thanks a lot, Karen, for uh, presenting. Uh, thanks everyone for the feedback. I have to run. So if anyone wants to take the mic and talk about a few things. Uh, now is the time to speak. Else, happy weekend, everyone. Yeah, how we can have a happy hour for the next 15 minutes. Vish, yeah. the call is on you. Cheers, everyone. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> on, I just wanted to highlight one thing on the on the sequence. There's a lot of interest in the sequence diagram. There's a slightly dated sequence diagram. Initially, first, I think it was done by Stephen and Arvind uh, when the porch was introduced into Nephew. I'll try to find the link and I'm going to put that in the architecture channel. That's going to show the interaction between. Uh, the 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 northbound APIs, CRDs, and different push controllers, and how eventually that gets into config sync, uh, and into, into the Git repo and into the config sync. So I will share that in the architecture. I need to find it where it is. Slightly dated, but it's still overall relevant. I will, I'm gonna share that. Yeah, I think this is something you shared about like a month back. I remember about yes, some admins, right? Yes, yes. I think I did not share in the architecture channel. I think I'll share that there. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Could probably we can use that as a uh, uh, maybe inspiration to do if we want to do the sequence diagram with the new new things in place. I think some things have changed. Uh, maybe some of the functions we introduced uh, or uh, yeah, I think things will definitely change <laughs> depending on what we do with the post in the future. That's a different story. Yeah. All right, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, Anybody else wants to chime in? Uh... The only thing is, I think when you do sequence diagrams, I think the, the boxes, you know, those specific sub subsystems have to be identified and then that should be reflected in those sequence diagrams. So I think even if you take something that's already there, then I think we'll have to adapt it. Yes, we have to adapt it. I, yeah. True. I, my main, main intention is to just... Uh, uh, if it helps in understanding the current system, because most of the parts are still relevant. Uh, uh, so that was the main intention of, you know, just sharing it. Uh, so no, think, it's a good starting point, yes. Yes, I think we, yeah, like you said, we definitely need to adapt to the system that we have today. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, anything, anybody? Yeah, maybe uh, I'll go back to my point from before some of our point, you know, about the different roles. Um, so yeah, I, I, I actually really like the C4 structure. I think it suits a lot of different kind of big systems. I think, I think many people agree here. It's very uh, refreshingly clear. Uh, what do people think about this idea of a persona view as, as a separate additional look? I mean, I think some people said it could be a good idea, but to look at the different roles, you know, and one way you can think of it as a table, but I think, uh, you know, here are the different roles we support, right? But I think the diagram is more powerful because it shows which parts of the system different roles interact with, right? Um, and it's not to me just roles that are floating because they're not all telco, right? There are roles here that are 
network equipment provider and cloud provider, right? So there's there's almost a, you know, we have three parties here, right? So there's there's a complexity in bringing these three parties together, at least three, I should say, um, and with their own different roles and how they interact. Um, I, I think such a diagram could be really helpful because I think people get really confused. Well, is Nefio for NEPs? Is Nefio for telcos? Who's going to do what? Where's the system integrator, right? That's the kind of fourth <laughs> uh, party here as well. Um, I think that's a kind of business oriented view that I think a lot of people are trying to figure out from Nephew, like who is it for, right? Who's going to be consuming this and who's going to be providing this? Who is going to be making money from this, right? With support, uh, who do you call when things go wrong, right? It's, um, I, I think that's a question that a lot of people ask and don't have a clear vision for. Yeah, like, I think that makes yes. sense because especially let's think about the other things that we are talking about, like SDK, for example. Exactly. SDK, yeah. so who's obviously is not a core con if you're component, but it's one of the important components. Uh, when I say core, not may not be uh, uh, the, the component like a Porsche that is always running, but like that's where the, that's of use for the developers and that's of use for the NEPs to create operators, right? So and also cloud provider. Like, Right. If you know exactly. Amazon wants to uh, onboard Amazon Cloud into Nefio, they would look right. to how to do it, right? And the SDK could help them with doing that as well, right? Creating yeah. their adapters or whatever it is. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, I think, I think uh, I'm agreeing with you. What you're saying, I just want to give an example. Yeah, so that makes sense, and probably having a persona view makes sense. Right, right. I want to add, uh, Tom. See, you were right. See, before the system closed system diagram and open system diagram, and then the component diagram comes. Usually, right, see, I'm talking about, you know better, right? Um, we start with what is called use case diagram, where actors and systems will be there. In the actor, so many personas will be there. So if you can put, what I see, right, um, even in the C4, there is one use case that's coming in the last section. Even the deployment stuff, what uh, people were looking for, right? Um, workload cluster. Uh, various management cluster, you know, those things are also coming in the back, but I agree with you, and even Kiran will pick up directly, right? We could start with the use case, uh, you know, actor system first, and then go to the system. I agree, yeah. I, yeah, we'll we'll take, yeah. I agree, too. I agree. We, we can mine our use cases for uh, data on uh, personas. <laughs> I can give you one perspective, at least from, say, from Oran perspective, I mean, the architecture remains constant. Right there, you don't really show the actual stakeholders in the diagram, but they tend to kind of kind of identify those kind of personas in, in sequence diagrams, whether it is a cloud planner or a service designer or an, another kind of an operator at the cloud side doing some things and stuff like that. But, but you know that that just generally that's how uh, at least things are done. Uh, basically, this becomes very specific to a specific working group. Uh, how this person has made. For example, if you take the same architecture into working group two, you might have a completely different set of uh, personas versus somebody who is probably doing something like service assurance and so on. So that's another way you can look at it. I'm not sure. I think, uh, I don't know, other standards group also probably do it that way, let's see and so on. Dan, you might have some exposure there as well. Yeah, yeah. this is the silence of agreement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, well, it sounds like a silence now, so it may be a good place to stop. Um, I think so. I think we're all happy with the progress. <laughs> I think so. Let's stop the recording and then we'll... Thank you. Happy, happy weekend, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Bye, everyone. Yeah, have a nice weekend. Bye. Bye. -bye.